Alright everyone, in this video I'll show you how to solve the 2015 AP Physics C Mechanics FRQ number 2. So, it says a uh, small dart of mass, 0 0.02 kilograms. Okay, let's call that M1. M1 equals 0 0.02 kilograms. It is launched at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. So the V1 initial equals 10 meters per second. Uh, at the moment it reaches the highest point in its path and is moving horizontally, it collides with and sticks to a wooden block of mass 0.1 kilograms. So let's say M2 is 0.1 kilograms. That is suspended at the end of a massless string. Okay, so the string is massless. Uh, the center of mass of the block is point, uh, sorry, 1.2 meters below the pivot point of the string. So the string is 1.2 meters long, let's call that L. So L is 1.2 meters. Uh, the block and dart then swing up until the string makes an angle theta with the vertical as shown above. Air resistance is negligible. Okay, so part A here. So let's determine the speed of the dart just before it strikes the block. The speed of the dart just before it strikes the block. Well right here it says uh, at the moment it reaches the highest point in its path and is moving horizontally, it collides. Well, at the highest point, the y velocity is zero. Right? And at the highest point, it's going to go all the way up. So vertically, its velocity is going to be zero. And all it's going to have there is its x velocity. Well, it says air resistance is negligible. Therefore, there's no acceleration in the x direction, right? There's only an acceleration in the y, which is g, gravity. Therefore, the initial velocity in the x is going to be the same all the way throughout its projectile motion. Therefore, uh, that velocity there is going to just be equal to its initial x velocity. So let's find its initial x velocity. That's going to equal the speed of the dart just before it strikes the block. So it's the x, right? So it's just going to be the initial and then cosine because it's x. And uh, it's launched at 30 degrees, so it's cosine of 30 degrees. So that's going to be 10 as its initial speed times the cosine of 30 degrees. And that's going to equal 8.66 meters per second. And there's our answer. That's the speed of the dart just before it strikes the block. Okay, for part B. Calculate the horizontal distance d between the launching point of the dart and the point on the floor directly below the block. Okay, so they're asking us to find this d right here. Okay, so d is going to be in the x. So the only equation we can use in the x direction when we're in projectile motion is uh, because its acceleration is going to be zero, we can only use that vx equals d over t. So d is going to be this. So that's the distance in the x direction. Well, we need t, right? We don't know t. We do know vx. It's right here. So we need to find t. Well, we can find t using a y uh, kinematic equation. Kinematic equation in the y direction. So let's use our first kinematic equation uh, in the y direction to find our time. So it's going to be v final in the y equals v initial in the y plus acceleration in the y multiplied by time. Well, we know that v final in the y is going to be equal to 0. And then v initial in the y, we can calculate, uh, which is just going to be v initial times the sine of the angle it's launched at, which is 30 degrees. Uh, and that's going to equal 10 times sine of 30. And that's going to be 5 meters per second. So we're going to have 5 meters per second. And then acceleration here. Well, that's going to be g. But it's going to be negative g because it's going up. And g is down. So it's opposing its motion, which is going up. So that's going to be minus g multiplied by time. Let's solve for time here. We'll get that time is equal to 5 divided by 9.81, which is going to be equal to 0.51 seconds. 
Oh, never mind, we don't need that. Uh, we don't need the box size, that's not our final answer, but it's 0.51 seconds. So then, let's plug this time into our equation here to find our distance. So let's rearrange for distance. We're going to have d equals velocity in the x multiplied by time. So we'll have that d is equal to our x velocity, which is 8.66, times our time, which is 0.51 seconds. Therefore, d is equal to 4.42 meters. Alrighty. Part C. Calculate the speed of the block just after the dart strikes. Just after the dart strikes. Okay, uh, so we're going to have to use uh, momentum here. And collisions. So this is an inelastic collision, right? Because it says the dart sticks to the wooden block. Therefore, initially, they're going to have two separate... Uh, masses and their own velocities, but after the collision, they're going to combine into one mass, which has one final velocity. So let's, uh, we know that initial momentum equals final momentum, so let's set up our initial momentum, which is m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial. Right, this is the dart here, and this is the block. And that's going to equal, and then they stick together, they're going to combine into one object, so we're going to have m1 plus m2 times that common final velocity. It's going to be one object of one velocity. Uh, well, this is going to equal zero, right? M2 V2 initial because V2 initial is zero. It's a stationary block at the beginning, so that's going to be zero. So we'll have M1 V1 initial equals M1 plus M2 times V final. Let's solve for our V final here. We'll have V final equals M1 V1 initial over M1 plus M2. Let's plug in our known values here. M1 is equal to 0 0.02 times U1 initial, which is 10, and divided by M1, which is 0 0.02, and then plus M2, which is 0 0.1. And that is going to equal 1.44 meters per second. So there is our speed of the block just after the dart strikes. Alrighty, for part D. It says, calculate the angle theta through which the dart and block on the string will rise before coming momentarily to rest. Okay, so it's asking for this angle here. When it goes up and stops here, what's the same? It was theta, the angle made here. Okay. Theta. Uh, I think we should use energy here, right? Because it's going to go all the way up and stop, so that's going to be gravitational potential energy here. So let's set up our... We know this is a, we can apply conservation of momentum here because there's no dissipative forces like friction or air resistance. So we can have initial energy equals final energy. And initially it's just gonna have kinetic energy when it hits right here. When the dart hits, it's gonna have that kinetic energy which is one half mv squared. And then finally it's gonna stop and have that gravitational potential energy. So it's gonna have mgh. Well we need to find h here. So in our little uh, scenario here, in our little diagram, it goes up all the way to here. This is still L, these are equal. So we need to find this distance right here. This is H, so the height that it goes up between here and here. And then theta is going to be right here. Well, to find this, how about we find the length of the smaller triangle here? So this smaller triangle right here, and then subtract that from the from L, which is the big triangle, to find our H here. So let's set up our small triangle here, which is going to have theta there, going to have L there, it's going to have X, which is what we're solving for. Uh, so we can say that the cosine of theta is X over L, therefore X is equal to L cosine of theta. Um, and then to find the difference here, we're going to do L minus L cosine theta. Now we could factor out an L here. So we're going to have L times 1 minus cosine theta. And that is equal to H. So now that we have our H here, we can plug it into our energy equation here that we've set up. So we'll have 
I'm just cancel out here. We'll have v squared over 2 is equal to g times l all times 1 minus cosine theta. Um, and let's solve for theta here. So we'll have v squared over 2gl is equal to 1 minus cosine theta. So therefore, theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 minus v squared over 2gl. And let's just plug in our known values here. So we'll get that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 minus and v squared, our v is going to be that uh, initial velocity right after the dart strikes the block, which is 1.44. So we'll have 1.44 squared over 2 times g, which is 9.81, times l, which is 1.2. That's the length of the string. And finally, we'll find that theta is equal to 24.23 degrees. Uh, part E it says the block then continues to swing as a simple pendulum. Calculate the time between when the dart collides with the block and when the block first returns to its original position. Okay, so it says it's a simple pendulum. Therefore, the or it's a simple pendulum. So the system is in simple harmonic motion. Uh, so let's find our. Uh, period here. So it's asking for the period of oscillation when it goes up and then goes back to its original posi position. That is one oscillation. So let's use our period formula for a simple pendulum, which is t equals 2 pi times the square root of l over g. So we have our l here, and we know what g is, so let's just plug all of that in. 2 pi times the square root of, of uh, 1.2 over 9.81, that will be equal to 2.2 seconds. So there's our period of oscillation. All right, for part F, it says, in a second experiment, a dart with more mass is launched at the same speed and angle. The dart collides with and sticks to the same wooden block. Uh, so basically it just says the mass increases. That's the only thing that changes mass of the dart. Uh, for part for the first part, would the angle theta that the dart and block swing to increase, decrease, or stay the same? So it's asking, would this angle here increase, decrease, or stay the same? Well, now that the dart has more mass, doesn't this mean that in the collision, the uh, momentum will be greater? Because now it has a greater mass. So now that the, the momentum in the collision is greater, the speed right after the collision will increase. So the speed here will be greater, therefore it will reach a higher angle. So we can say uh, increase because mass increases, so the speed after the collision increases, so the angle increases. The second part of F, would the period of oscillation after the collision increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, the period of oscillation, well, in our period equation here, do we have mass anywhere here? Well, no, the only thing that the period of a simple pendulum depends on is the length of the string. So a more massive uh, uh, mass on the string doesn't affect the period. So we can say that it stays the same. So we can say stay the same because the period only depends on the length of the string. And it doesn't depend on the mass, so only depend on the length of the string. And there is our answer. All right, so that concludes the 2015 AP Physics C Mechanics FRQ number two. Thanks for watching.